Hey everybody, so today we actually have here, we have the 2019 MacBook Pro. This is the 13 inch. Uh, it did get a little bit of liquid damage on it. So we are actually able to turn it on. It does come on, but however, the trackpad has been really affected by the liquid. And also there's a few keys that don't work as well. And this is the type of keyboard that actually does have the, the war it's under warranty right when you buy it. So, so even over time, this does kind of go bad. So I'm a little bit concerned because the the space bar if it's completely stuck in there it has a little bit of tactile bump but not too much um, it is really easy for for liquid and food particles to go under this type of keyboard this isn't the the new 16 inch one this is the, the 2019 that has the old keyboard in it so um, touch board does work but you can kind of see here there's a little bit goopy uh, some coffee there or something tea it looks like I think it's coffee you can see it's all kind of the screens a little bit it was very gunky there but, yep. So we want to go take a look at underneath and see the connections, make sure they're all fine, because we know this is a liquid spill. So we want to kind of see what we can do for this person. Um, so yeah, let me go show you exactly how to open it and to, to look at it and everything. So this one, just do the six screws. There's two at the top and then there's four at the bottom. And these actually have latches for it. So um, when you do take it off, you want to make sure you can't just pop it up. You actually have to do it like kind of the old ones. There's the A1706, the A1708s. So all the 2016 and above, they kind of go like this way. So you would have to at least get a little bit of gap room here. Once you get a little bit of room, you can actually pop it up. And it makes a little latch go up. And once the little latch goes up, you can just slide it out. In our case, we have a little bit of liquid, so it's a little bit more stuck. You can see even this latch on this side goes this way. Okay, so you can see automatically here, there's clearly a lot of liquid damage. It's all over there. You can see when we open it, you can really see it. It's all over the battery, it's all over the chips over here, all over the board, on, all on this right side here, it's totally covered. There's even some actually up here too on the heat sink. So always the first thing you wanna do on any type of repair is you wanna make sure you take out the battery connection so you lift up the little latch, and then you just take out the little cable. Be very, very careful. Take your time with it. It does come up. Once you get that up, then it's good to go. It's very difficult because they do have the T2 chip, so for repairs, they make it very, very difficult to actually, get, to actually do repairs or to get replacement parts. Um, in this case, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to use an ultrasonic cleaner. You can check our other videos about that on other repairs. So ultrasonic is more of a medical device, but it actually does very, very well for from other boards. You can see almost any other, anyone that's really does component level, they actually have one of these. They do, it does a very good job of getting underneath the chips. It cleans the board thoroughly. Because we do have a trackpad issue and we do have the keyboard issue. Most of the time for the trackpad, you just unscrew these screws and then it does come up. I'll show you that. But um, as far as the keyboard goes, it's very difficult to find a keyboard replacement for this one. Um, most of the time, it's going to be a palm rest. So you have to get the whole entire palm rest. And so you have to get the one that has a touch bar because the touch bar is very difficult to remove if you don't have otherwise. And um, then you're going to have to even remove the power button. I'm not too sure if it will work if we did get a replacement because, again, there's a security on the T2 chip that does, that does prevent a lot of different type of repairs. So we really wanted to make sure we just repair this one. So what we're going to do with the keyboard, since it's too hard to find and it's going to be very difficult to repair and take off, we're actually going to try to use ultrasonic cleaner on the keyboard. So we're going to go see if that works at all. Um, we never really tried it before, so it's going to be really interesting to see how it works on a keyboard. Um, it does a very good job, of course, on the motherboard, and once you dry it out, it does do a very good job in cleaning it. But any usually any type of replacement chips that you have to do, we have to we can resolder it or uh, get any type of replacement components. But if we can get the main board working, that's great. But I'm not too sure, especially on this type of keyboard. The keyboard does have a recall, so it does kind of raise the question is, if, is there really much we can do? So um, let's see with the ultrasonic. Let's remove the board. Let's take everything up and let's see what the ultrasonic could do. It's not going to work until this one's attached to. Just take this up. And make sure you be very careful on all these screws. They do change up the screwdriver types that you need for each one. 
So it's very easy to strip. There's also a lot of corrosion over here. Can't really see it, especially with this connection. If you have any trouble, because there's liquid damage on just removing any type of type of um, connections or anything, just spray a little bit of alcohol. Try to get the highest amount. If you want to get like 99% or 90, try to do that. It does help, with, especially if it's sticky. All right, so this screw up here, you actually do need a special screwdriver. This is one we haven't really seen before on the new ones. And it's the last one, of course, that attaches up to the heat sink up here. Um, worst case scenario, you could use pliers to take it up. This, this see, is snagged a little bit, it goes underneath. So you can see there's a little crevice here. That cable actually goes underneath there and goes lifts over. This is it, this is a little board on the MacBook Pro. And let's see if we turn it over if we see any damage here. I do see a little bit of a stain on this chip right here. You can kind of see it. It's a little bit of a gray stain. The rest actually looks pretty clean. For how bad it is on the top, it looks pretty clean on the back. I mean, of course, there's a little bit on the heat sink there. But now it is that the, the computer is actually working. The screen comes on. Everything else doesn't work. It's just mainly the trackpad and, of course, the keyboard. So. We're going to see what we can do with this one, even though we are a little bit concerned about the corrosion up here. So I need to remove the screen, and I also need to remove the fan here, and you definitely want to take out the battery. You don't want to put battery in any type of um, clean solution or anything like that. So. Check to see if there's any more. It looks like that's it. So the fan comes up there. Just be worried this is the fan connection cable. It is a little bit buried and it's weird because it attaches to the palm rest here rather than the motherboard directly. So that's really interesting. So I like to go this way. It makes it a little bit easier for me. I don't know why, but it does. So the main ones you have to do when you do um, the LCDs, there are six screws here, six screws here. This is the Wi-Fi antenna. There's 12 of them. So they're very small. Um, the, the screwdriver you want to use for this one is like the iPhone screwdriver for the bottom screws. Um, it's a very specific one. If you don't have it, I wouldn't even bother honestly attempting it because it's very difficult if you don't have that. Just like that, we separated it. I just want to put this to the side. You can kind of see here's the screws. So the interesting, even with the 2019, they're still going with this design on the screen. Usually this goes, this tears, and this can go actually pretty quickly because it keeps tugging, keeps pulling. You can also get food stuck in there. So it's interesting they kept going with this even after all these years. All right, so now the last thing we want to do is make sure we take up the battery. So let's take out the power button then. There's a few screws for that one. And we know this one's good, so we want to leave this alone. We don't want to make sure we put it in with the other. Just be very careful lifting it, because I know there's so many things attached to it here. It's ridiculous. Because they did put a little bit of glue, and it's, enough, it's so thin, it's so easy to tear. So I'll just get it underneath it come up just like that. You can see the middle contact then. Once that comes up, you should be able to see underneath that there's a screw there. 
This is with a headphone jack. This is a headphone jack connection right here. Um, I think this is at Heast as well, so there's a lot of adhesion everywhere here. It's just very light, but it's enough to, to make you worry. Okay, this comes up, and here you want to take out the jack. It's at Heast on this side. Okay, so that comes up. That's the separated that cable there. Wow, look at that. There are one, two, three, four, five, six screws just for the power button there after you do all that other work. So let's see. Let's see if there's anything else after this. All right, so this is a bracket. The bracket comes up. And if, if I'm correct, I think what this is going to do is I think it's just going to fall right when I lift this. So, because I think it's just going to go right through. And yes, it does. It goes right through. So you can see there is still, here's the power button. There's a little bit of coffee or whatever the spill was, a liquid spill on that, on that edge there, but that's fine. So now the last thing we have to do, actually there's still the, the Thunderbolt. So the, the USB-C port, it should be pretty easy. This one's actually pretty cool that they do this. They actually make this removable. So we want to just take up, it's two screws, and that should come out. That's really cool actually that you did that one. It's only I give them credit for, it, definitely. You just remove it, it should just come right up. So don't have to worry about those ports. All right, so now the fun time. So we're going to get to the battery. And the battery, it looks like it's adhesed three different spots. So, and of course, there's a liquid spill, so you want to be really careful. So what I like to do, if you've seen any of the other videos we did with the MacBook Pro batteries, I just put a lot of alcohol after you just come up. So just getting it all in there. All right, so the battery's pretty difficult to remove. Um, do put a lot of alcohol on it if you can. Put some heat on it if you're having a little bit more trouble. Just come up after that. Always, of course, be careful of the cable up here that goes for the battery. And there's nothing on the back, so you shouldn't be too worried. But you can see it's three strips each. So each one has three strips there. So just take that up. And since we got the battery up, so now let's take a look what we have underneath here. So if you go, if you actually look at this, there's on the connection here, there's a little bit of corrosion. You can kind of see it way up close. You see the little blue and discoloration there. That does mean that there's a little bit of damage there. There's some liquid that's gone in, in there. If you ever have a trackpad problem in the future, it should just be based on that. So then you shouldn't have to take up the battery or do anything. But um, in this case, we need to take this up anyway because we need to take out the battery for the ultrasonic. If you look at our, actually our other video, we actually have a 2016, 2017 MacBook Pro to take out the trackpad. It should be very similar, if not the same exact thing, um, if I'm not mistaken, of course. So let me go take a look. Let's see here. So it should be the same as we did last time. Let's take out a bunch of the screws here. falling down okay so that came right out so those are the only screws you need to do you can see the blue there there's a corrosion there and on the top part up at the very very top here you can kind of see there's a lot of corrosion going on there so when we take this out we have to be really careful because um, if you actually watched it before the cable here is actually a little bit of heast so at the very very edges it is I'm gonna take it up very carefully lift up the latch and for this one, I'm definitely going to put some alcohol on because I do see the damage there. So this is going to help me remove the cable a little bit better. As you can see right there, there's quite a bit of corrosion, a little bit of damage on the cable. So we're going to go see if we can't clean out probably with just alcohol. And hopefully it'll work still from then. Take everything out. This is kind of what it looks like after you do all that work. Um, yep, this is just the palm rest here. Of course, the touch bar is totally adhesed all the way across. Um, we're going to make sure when we do put it in the ultrasonic that we don't touch this part. We're just going to kind of put it more on the lower bottom and wherever the connection is. Um, it's hopefully that will work if we can just kind of clear it maybe up to here. But more than that, put it in the water and then um, kind of see how it works out from there. Again, this is a test. We have no idea this is going to work, but we don't have much of a choice because there are no parts available for this. And um, almost anywhere. And it's very difficult just to do any type of repairs usually, with, with especially with newer MacBook pros and um, we had to do fixes for almost all of them so we can't really get replacement parts if it's really necessary so it's very difficult. So this is actually what the trackpad looks like under a microscope. It 
looks pretty bad. You can see all the corrosion here, all the liquid damage here. You can see the damage is on the chip right there. It does look pretty bad. Here's just more of an overview. So here's where the connection is. You can really see underneath the flap, all that damage there. You can see a little blue spot right there too. So it does look like that this is really, really impacted here. So it does look like we're gonna probably have to put this through the ultrasonic as well and see how it works through this. So you can see all the chips and everything is damaged here. It does look really bad. So anyways guys, thanks a lot for watching. This has been part one of a little series. Cleaning the keyboard of the MacBook Pro 13-inch 2019, 2159. This has been part one of this little adventure we're going on with you guys. Um, stay tuned for part two. It should be coming up pretty soon. We'll see if the ultrasonic did work. All right, thanks a lot for watching. Bye, guys.